Welcome to part 39 of the Rick and Morty app series. We're gonna start taking a look at the search functionality now that we've built out the location details as well as all the character and episode related tabs. Um, I do realize that for locations, we actually have not built out pagination. So we will build this out once we are done with search so I don't forget about it. So that all being said, drop a like and let's continue onwards. So we already added the search uh, kind of magnifying glass icon to the top right of all three of these controllers. We actually want to add the functionality for that now. So uh, we already created this RM search view controller. And I had stubbed out in here that this controller will take a config, which basically just has a type in it. And we want to show this when we tap on the uh, magnifying glass. It looks like I hooked it up already for the characters, but we do want to make sure we hook it up for episode and location as well. So let's open up those core tabs. Going to jump into location here. And we'll just fill out the did tap search function, which is going to create this. We'll take in a config with a types, create that. In this case, it'll be episode. Is that what we're in? We are in the, actually we're in the location controller right now. So this one we will do as location. And we'll say navigation controller, push view controller, and we'll say true. Just like that, we'll also say that the navigation item large title display mode is never and I shall copy and paste this into the episode variant of this. It's actually already looks like the cursor was in the right spot and just change the type of our config to be episode. So now that we have this controller, based on the type, we are going to have some permutations uh, based on this configuration object. So on this uh, enum of type, we are going to have a title and essentially it is going to just be the, I'll actually type it out manually. So what we'll do is we'll say switch on self and self has a couple of these uh, different types, three to be exact. And here we'll say that this is search characters and debatably, you can do this in like a view model esque object, but I'm going to do it in here just so you guys have another flavor of design at your disposal. But we can abstract all of this. So now that we have that title, what we'll do here is we'll say that the title of this controller will be type.title. Looks like it's yelling at me for some reason. Let's see why that is. Type dot display title is what I called it, I think. Let me see what I called it. So it looks like we just called it title. Oh, and the reason actually it's yelling at me is because we don't even have a type. We are holding on to config dot type and this thing has a title. And just for visual separation, I will actually go and add some comments here to separate things. All right, these are the initializers and this will be config duration for our search session. And now that we have a screen that we can actually create and also specify what type of search we're going to be doing, be it character, be it location, be it episode, we actually want to add the ability to kick off search uh, API calls. So to do that, we're going to look at the actual API and see how it's structured. So here is searching for characters, basically filtering characters. And it actually tells you that you basically use the same character endpoint. And what you want to do is you want to go and specify uh, query parameters for what's supported. So it looks like what's supported is name, status, species, type, and gender. Respectively, I think this is how the location and uh, episode are going to be structured as well. You can specify the name, the type, and the dimension here. And let's continue onwards to episode. For episodes, we can actually filter by the name and the episode. So what I'm thinking we'll do, and I'm going to actually write this here so I can actually remember for my own sake. For episodes, we're only going to allow names. For locations, we'll allow name or uh, maybe the type, so either planets or uh, cluster, I think, with some of the other ones that I saw. 
And the most uh, interesting search case will be the character, either the name, and I think there were a couple other arguments or parameters we can specify. So let's take a look. We have name, maybe we'll do status, uh, gender, and let's see, the reason I'm picking status and gender is because these have a fixed uh, set of options, whereas species or type could be basically anything the user would have to type it in. I want to pick in this case options that are uh, more or less fixed. So in this case, we'll be able to search by name, status, and gender. Cool, so let's go ahead and do that. So not only do we want to construct these API requests this way with the permutation of data, but we also want our view here to be um, you know, reflective of the things the user can actually search by. So what I'm thinking is we'll want to do is we probably want a dynamic view up here based on what we want to allow as search criteria. So in the case of characters, we'll have a field and two buttons for status and gender. In the case of episodes, we'll just have a field. For location, we'll have the field plus a type selector. Um, and actually, uh, one thing that I have just thought about is, well, we also want to show our search results so the best way to probably show these results is once we hit a search button, we probably just want to search, you know, right, show the results right below whatever, you know, search bar we have. So that's a whole lot of stuff to do. So let's actually break this up into more digestible pieces. So we want a dynamic search option view. We want to actually perform the searching, so the API call. We want to render results, and we also want to handle render no results zero state. So in case we have no results that come back as a byproduct of our API call, we do want to render an appropriate view here to show that there are no results that actually came back. So let's go ahead and start working on all of this. The first thing I'll do is I will abstract all of the view related stuff that we are going to do into a dedicated search view. So that is going to encapsulate the entirety of the search UI, including the search field at the top, as well as any options we add. So let's create a subclass of a view. It'll be a RM search view. Alrighty, looking pretty good. And let's figure out what we want in here. Now, taking another step back, it dawns on me that for episodes, we have collection view cells. For characters, we also have collection view cells. But for locations, we actually have table view cells. So what we'll probably want to do is create a collection view cell also for the locations because if we choose a collection view to showcase our search results, we can't put a table view cell in it. So I just wanna call that out up front. It might get a little confusing, so I'll do my best to explain all this jazz as we go. So in here, I am going to initialize, rather override the initializer, set a background color like we have always done in all of our other uh, examples. I'll also assign this property to false since we'll auto lay this out. We need the required initializer, and we'll want to configure this with a view model as well. So there are a number of ways we can go about doing this. What I will actually do here is instead of overriding this initializer, let me actually pass in a frame as well as the view model to the constructor here. So this will be a RM search view, view model, and it dawns on me that I haven't created this yet, so let me actually do that right now in the view model folder. I'll create a new file, which will be this view model. And we'll just stick this in right here. This will take a config, which is our rm search view controller dot config. And we are just going to hang on to this in here. Alrighty, so we have the config that we are trying to construct a view model for. Back in our view, let's actually uh, also hang on to the view model here. It's obviously relevant, so I'll create this here. And I'll say self.viewmodel will be view model. Now, the reason it's important that we have the view model as a non-optional 
uh, global instance on this uh, view is because we're going to do a whole lot of stuff with this view model. This is not only going to be responsible for showing uh, our search results. So let's do responsibilities. We're going to show search results, but we're also going to show no results view. Rather, we're going to drive the logic. We're also going to kick off API requests. And we're going to do basically all the heavy lifting inside of here, which is why it's important that we do actually pass this into the view up front. So in here, we if you think about it, what are we going to need? So we're going to need some sub views. And I'm going to comment all this out for this search example, because search is one of the more complex aspects of any app. So what we're going to want is as follows. We'll want a search uh, input view is what I'll call it. And this is going to hold like the bar, uh, selection buttons, things of that nature. We'll also want our no results view. We'll also want our results collection view. So those are the three things that we are going to want in the view department. Now for our collection view, you guys probably already know, we are going to want to conform to the delegate and data source and actually have some cells being shown here. So let's figure out how we will actually do that. Well, we should probably use a compositional layout. That way we can actually create more dynamic uh, layouts here. So to do so, we are going to want to put the layouts in the view model, but eventually we are going to want to conform this guy, the view itself, to the collection view delegate, as well as the collection view data source. And let's bring in the minimum function. So number of items in section, we'll do zero. Cell for row, rather item at index path, I'll just return a uh, base cell, so we'll say collection view, and I'm just adding this so we can actually just compile instead of you know worrying about all these details quite yet because we will want to do this iteratively. We also want to handle selection on one of the search results. So if the user finds a character and wants to learn more about that character, we should be able to via search just tap on that character. So cool, this is all the collection view stuff. Let me go ahead and just put a mark. And you can kind of notice that I'm preemptively adding a bunch of comments for myself because views like this get a little wild and it's really good to be organizationally um, sound before you get into things. The last thing I'll do in this video before we start doing each of these tasks one by one is I will actually create two views for our no results view and our search input view. So in here, we are going to create a new view it is going to be a rm uh, no search results view. Go ahead and create that. It's kind of self-explanatory what this view is going to show. We are not going to take in a view model for this. Well, actually, I take that back. Maybe we'll create a view model for this as well, just to not break our own uh, design paradigm. So in view models, let me create a folder to just organize all this jazz and I'll call it search and we'll attempt to name it appropriately. I'll drag our other search model into there and we'll create accordingly the name of the view plus view model. All right, name of the view plus view model. And this one actually we can get away with just calling it a struct. We're gonna hard code some constants in here, not now, but eventually. And the other thing we need, and this view is actually going to be um, dynamic as well, the search input view. Basically, whether we show a bar up here or some other options based on our session, right? Are we searching for characters, episodes, what have you? So let's create that other view. It's going to be a RM search input view. And you can name this, you know, something better if you can think of a better name. I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. We'll basically put a final there and this thing is going to have its own view model as well. So let's go ahead and create under the view model search folder, a respective view model. This one I'll do final class. 
since it'll be a little more uh, intricate and we might mutate types, we want it to be a reference type and not a value type, though it is a little subjective. Go ahead and just build and give it a run. Make sure nothing is crashing, nothing strange when we click into search. Obviously nothing will show up here quite yet, but we're gonna start chipping away at it in the next video. Before I end the video here, let me CD into our project. We'll stage everything. I'm going to commit this and say, start building search and we'll do a git push. So cool, in the next video, we'll probably start working on showing uh, or building the, maybe we'll start with the no results view because it's kind of the simpler of the various options. So stay tuned for that, drop a like before clicking on to the next video and I shall see you guys there.